Uh, hi guys, uh, today I'm going to be doing my um, my Alfred Hitchcock DVD collection. Um, so yep, yeah, let's get started. So we've got um, Rope. This was released in 1948. Um, one of uh, Hitchcock's first films in in colour as well. Uh, starring obviously James Stewart and Farley Granger, as you can see on the front. That's James Stewart. That's Farley Granger. Uh, John Dahl as well. Um, he's in it. Um, it's uh. Yeah, it's about like two guys who um want to commit this murder and they want to try and obviously you know get away with it so it's like the art of murder that you know they call it but uh obviously they don't because of james stewart and his character uh he's their former college professor uh, and obviously he, find, he you know catches on to to what they're up to and he uh he obviously uncovers the you know um uncovers the murder but i won't give too much away in case you haven't watched the film but it's a it's a very good um a very good film, uh, and this was the the film that I, I watched that kind of got me into the loving Alfred Hitchcock films. Um, you know, and his camera work and his, um, you know, the suspense that he puts into his pictures, which obviously he's known for. Um, yeah, this film I'd probably give probably about a probably about seven and a half out of ten. It's got some, so like I said, some good camera working, uh, good characters, good script, a uh, good plot actually. Um, but it's, I, I don't think it's one of his, str his strongest films overall. Um, but a good film nonetheless and well worth, well worth a watch. So, yep. Yeah. And then next we've got a uh, strange on a train. This one is, uh, obviously I've got the double feature DVD. I've got the Hollywood original and the alternative British version. There's not much difference, probably a, a, just a difference in, in the length of the film and, um, a few of the scenes as well. Um, but you can uh, you can get this on obviously get this DVD. I think you can get the normal one as well. Um, but this film was released in 1951. Uh, this was uh, a, another good another good film for me. I think better than Rope actually. I would say better than Rope. Um, again, got some good scenes in, good characters, things like that. Uh, this stars um, Robert Walker, as you can see on the front there. Um, and Farley Granger again, who was, who was, as I mentioned before, was in was in Rope. Um, this was his second and final appearance in Alfred Hitchcock's films. Um, this one's uh, about a, a guy called uh, Bruno, who uh, obviously meets Farley Granger's character called Guy on a train, hence the title, hence the, the title of the film. Um, and they, and he tries to get a Guy to like agree to uh, a double murder. Um, type of thing, you know, like a murder for a murder, like exchange murders, um, where Guy kills his kills Bruno's father, or Bruno kills um, Guy's wife, as you, he's killing there. Obviously, Bruno goes goes through with the plan, but I won't reveal again. I won't reveal too much of the uh, the plot, but um, it's a real, re really good suspenseful film. Um, you know, quite a lot of uh, good thrills in it and everything, and. And yeah, so I'd probably give this one probably about an eight out of ten. I think it's one of regarded as one of Hitchcock's probably first like nineteen fifties kind of classic films. Um, probably one of his one of his earlier masterpieces as well. Um, well worth a watch, and this is gold good in in anybody's DVD collection really. <laughs> and then you got um, Dial M for Murder. This was nineteen fifty four, obviously starring Ray Milan, Grace Kelly, and Robert Cummings. <laughs> Um, this was Grace Kelly's uh, debut film for Hitchcock, her uh, first of um, three films. Um, this one, she, you know, Grace Kelly puts in a, a good, a good well, debut performance for, you know, in an Hitchcock film. Um, and it's uh, it's this is probably one of my favourite um, Alfred Hitchcock films, probably of the nineteen fifties as well. Um, Again, it's got some good performances, especially from Ray Land and Grace Kelly. Um, it's about uh, a, a guy, you know, a guy played by Ray Land, who tries to um, murder his wife, you know, and tries obviously tries to get away with it, you know, the usual. Um, but obviously, he gets somebody else to to kill him. He's a former college friend, um, but obviously that goes wrong, and you'll just have to watch yourself to to see but you know i'm not again i'm not going to tell you all the plot but that's just like the basic kind of outline it's a really good a really good 
Um, again, suspenseful film, like what Hitchcock's known for. But it's uh, it's got a lot of um, good uh, good a good script. Um, and again, some good memorable uh, scenes in. And you've got obviously a, a recurring actor in John Williams, who's in a lot of Hitchcock films. He's kind of a, a relatively underrated actor in the films. Um, not many people know that he's actually been in the most Hitchcock films out of all actors. Uh, he plays the detective in the film who, you know, catches on to the, to the murder and um, obviously solves it. But it's, um, yeah, it's a really good, another classic, well, another classic Hitchcock film. And I'll probably give this one probably about an eight and a half out of ten because it's really, really good. And it's well, well worth watching. And you've got next is uh, Rear Window. This one, again, released in 1954, starring James Stewart again this, in his uh, second of four roles, and Grace Kelly in her second of four, both in the same year, I know. <laughs> um, this one, I think, is probably Hitchcock's best film ever, in my opinion. It's filmed brilliantly. The, the, plot, is, the plot is really good. The characters are really good. The actors, the acting performance is really good. Um, Especially from uh, Thelma Ritter as well. She do, b puts in like a really good uh, comedic performance. And um, I think this is probably James Stewart's strongest um, acting performance of his four with Hitchcock. Um, and I think this is Grace Kelly's best um, best performance out of her three as well. Um, it's, um, it's just a really excellent film. I think it's, I think it's an absolute masterpiece, to be honest. I'd, I'd probably give you about... Probably about a nine, maybe even a ten out of ten, or a nine and a half. Uh, it's re it's you know re a really really good film, and I think if you want to start your Hitchcock collection, I would start with this one. Even though there's loads of films before this one where he's done, start with this one. It's really good to watch. Uh, you know this one's in colour as well. Um, like like Dial for Murder was in colour as well, but this one's in colour. Um, and it's it's just really really worth a watch it really is a, a, a fantastic film and i think once you've watched it you'll you know you'll you'll believe what i'm saying <laughs> so uh yeah and then next is um the man who knew too much this one was released in 1956 stars james stewart again and uh doris day like doris day obviously and this one is uh an, again another another good film but I think out of James Stewart, I think this is probably the weakest of his four, um, to be honest. It's not, again, not my favourite film, but it's not a bad film either. It's, uh, you know, it's not really one of his masterpieces, but it's um, it's just a, a quite, a, well, actually an excellent film overall, really. Um, I'd probably give this one probably a seven and a half out of ten again. Uh, it's about a, a boy being um, kidnapped from, uh, obviously, James Stewart and Doris Day play his parents. Um, and he gets kidnapped by some, um, like, you could, could say human traffickers, really, but, um, yeah, and, uh, he's got some, he's got some good, uh, some good scenes in, uh, especially the one at the, uh, I think it's like the, the theatre, um, yeah, or the concert hall, should I say, and that's, you know, the best scene to believe it, but it's a, it's a very good scene, uh, it's got some very good music in as well, and, um, I think Hitchcock did it. Obviously, did it really well. You know, it's still got obviously his usual suspense in. Um, good, good acting performances. Good, uh, and again some memorable scenes. But it's uh, still worth, still worth a watch. I wouldn't start your collection with this one, but um, obviously, if you want the complete Hitchcock collection, you collect it obviously. But it's, uh, it's still, still a good film and worth a watch. And next, we've got uh, Vertigo. This one was James Stewart's final, fourth and final performance for uh, in Hitchcock's films. Um, and this also stars Kim Novak in one of her early, earlier films as well. Um, this was released in 1958. Um, I think this is probably another one of James Stewart's strong, stronger performances. Um, he, you know, well, he puts in a, re a really good, a really good performance here. Um, he plays a man who's um, obviously who's, who's got vertigo, hence the title. Um, and he falls in love with this uh, this woman who is um, who is kind of tailing because he's a he's a detective, um, and he he just falls in love with her, you know, <laughs> the usual fall in love story. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, another really good film. Um, again, 
some classic scenes in nothing. This is probably what another one of Hitchcock's masterpieces really, really. It's one of his most personal films. As he stated, I think he stated himself in a, in interviews and other things. Um, that it's one of his most personal films. I think one of his actual favourite films, to be honest. Uh, apart from, uh, I think he liked Shadow Over Doubt as well. Um, but this one's, uh, this one's, I think probably one of my favourite films of Hitchcock's again. Uh, definitely in my top. And I think once I first watched it, I wasn't really that sure about it, you know. But then, as you keep watching it over and over, or again and again, you kind of get more used to the to the film, and you kind of I actually think you start liking it more. It grows on you, really. Um, and again, the music by Bernard Herrmann is fantastic in this film. It really, is the, the score is is really really good. I think one of the best scores in Hitchcock's films, probably ever, really. Apart from maybe Psycho as well. Um, we'll get to that later. <laughs> But the, yeah, I'd probably give this one probably about an eight out of ten. Um, some good, as I said before, some really good performances in, especially from James Stewart. Um, Kim Novak puts in a good performance though as well. Um, and uh, yeah, well, well worth a watch. Mm. And then you've got Psycho. This one's the granddaddy, in my opinion, of them all. The granddaddy. This one is, um, to me, Hitchcock's probably an. Again, one of his last, I would say one of his last masterpieces, to be honest, released in 1960. And to me, he's probably the best and most memorable film he has ever done. Obviously, everybody knows about this film in the infamous shower scene. If you don't know, I don't know where you've been, but, you know, <laughs> you must be under a rock or something. Um, obviously, it stars Janet Lee, as you can see. You've got Anthony Perkins. Um, Fame and memorable Norman Bates role, which uh, obviously made him a superstar. Uh, this was the role that really was his breakout role, really. Um, this was one of Janet Lee's probably kind of not breakout roles, but one of her most memorable roles, obviously, even though she wasn't in the film very long, really. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I think that obviously the the cam the camera work in this, the music, the you know the mon uh, the shower montage and things like that, everything was pure perfection. <laughs> um, it's. You know, I can watch this film over and over again. It really is well worth watching each and every time. Whenever it's been on the TV, I've watched it. You know, it's you know, it's it's a fantastic film. Again, I wasn't sure when I first watched it. I thought mm, I don't know, you know. But then, as I watched it again and again, I really kind of took in the the camera work and everything else. You know, I really, you know, scene by scene, I really, really started to fall in love with the film. Really, it's 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 absolutely brilliant. It's well worth a watch. And again, this is another one you can start your collection with as well. A, a lovely rear window. Um, and if you haven't watched this already, I really would watch it. Um, again, Jan uh, Janet Lee and Anthony Perkins put in, I think, the most memorable performances in the film. Um, you know, it's got some, obviously, a really good script and some classic lines which have been used, which have been like parodied, you know, and, and used in, in other films, especially like Scream and things like that. Um, and it's, uh, it's just one of the most memorable films in history, and really, I think I'll give this one an 11 out of 10. You know, it's, it's, it really is a masterpiece and well, well worth watching. Yeah. Obviously, this is in, um, it's all in black and white, even though this one's in colour. It, it is black and white, by the way, if you don't think I know. Um, the next is uh, Cold House. Now, this one, for me, is one of Hitchcock's um, weakest films, I would say, of his entire career, really. I really don't like it. No. The only reason why I've kept it on DVD is because I want to obviously complete his set, complete, complete his collection of, of his films. But I really, actually, really don't like this one. You know, no offence to the, to the actors like Frederick Stafford and John Forsyth, but you know, they're good actors in their own right. But it's, um, the performances are a bit, shall I say, uh, clunky. You know, they're a bit, a bit, bit of a miss, really. And the, the plots, are, you know, it's, it's okay. It's like a spy type of thriller film. Um, but I don't think it's really got the strong. Um, some of the strong themes what Hitchcock's you know known for. Like I don't think the camera works as good as any of the films. Uh, the script isn't. I don't think as good in some of the scenes. I don't think really as good either. It's just quite a quite a poor film to be honest. Really, released in 1969. Just on that, by the way. And um, this one's in definitely in colour. As you can see, it's all colour. Um, this one, um, I'd probably give probably a bit. To be honest, probably about five out of ten. It really is not very good. I will, you know, I won't really watch this one until, till probably he's watched a lot of his a lot of his other films. 
because there is a lot that are better than this. I mean, you know, a lot of people might say, well, you're only starting for, but that's just my personal opinion. You know, I mean, a lot of other people might really like the film, like one of the favourites, you know, and that's that, that's totally up to them, you know. I can't say anything about that, but to me, it's just one of his worser films, and I, I really don't like it, you know, so let's, <laughs> let's, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got, um, lastly, Frenzy. Uh, as, as you can see, I've only got about, about nine of his films. Um, which isn't which isn't a lot, you know. I've got a lot more to collect. To be fair, I haven't got round to it yet. But uh, this one was uh, released in 1972. Um, stars obviously John Pink, Alec McGowan, and Barry Foster. Obviously, Barry Foster I think puts in one of his more memorable roles, well apart from uh, Vanderbilt, because in Vanderbilt TV series as well. It's probably what you know him from, you know, uh, the British audience anyway. Um, this one's obviously an 18, as you can see, because it's got some. Uh, Got some very violent scenes, and I think this is his probably most um, violent film of his of his entire career. Really, um, it's um, a lot darker than his other films as well. And it's uh, this one's like just a you know a classic kind of murder you know type of film, um, like about a serial killer. You know, I won't go into the plot too much, but you know, um, it's it's I think it's better than Talpad, but it's not as good as say Psycho, for instance. Um, it's, uh, I'll probably give this one probably about a six and a half out of ten, roughly. Uh, it's, again, it's a, it's a good overall film, but not not one of his strongest films. Um, but obviously, why well, it's eighteen as well is because it's got a, a, a rape um, thing, in, which isn't very pleasant to be honest. Um, but it's uh, you know taking that away from it, it's you know it's still a, a good overall film, and to, uh, there's some good performances in it, you know, and some good. Uh, a good script and some more good music and things like that, some good scenes. But um, obviously, this one stars Bernard Cribbins as well, known for uh, obviously the Carry On films um, and other things, but uh, like Black and Oil as well. Um, th this one, um, you know, it's I think it's one of his, I don't know really, it's one of his last, I suppose, last good films, I suppose a lot of people would say. You know, it's like one of his last, like, obviously, his last UK films um, after going to Hollywood and things like that. but um, I, I I would still watch it. I think if you like, you know, if you like, if you like that type of thing, if you like a bit more violence and if you like those type of serial killer type of things, then a murder. I would, you know, I, w I would, uh, I would watch it. But apart, I, I wouldn't really say you'd have to start your collection because it's not really, um, you know, not, like I said, not as good as Psycho or Rear Window. So, but it's st still still worth a watch. And y you know, I think for any Hitchcock fan, it's well worth adding to your collection. So. Yeah, and did I say this was released in 1972? Yeah, <laughs> just to make you jealous. Uh, this was his penultimate film before um, his family plot as well. So, yeah, again, well worth a watch. So, um, thank you very much, guys, for watching. And um, there'll be a lot more new videos coming soon. So, um, I'll see you then. And for those of you who uh, would like to see the backs of the DVDs, I don't know why, but. You know, I know some of you might. Uh, this is just the backs of the DVDs. This one's Rope. And he's got a Strange on the Train. And he's got um, Silent Murder. And he's got Rear Window. The man who the woman. And then you've got um, Vertigo. What's that one? And you've got um, Psycho. Just that I forgot to include these, you see. Um, I know some people like to see the backs of the covers, so I just wanted to include it. So uh, thanks again, guys, for watching, and I'll uh, see you soon.